and welcome and good evening on this first day of the week, Monday evening. Thanks for joining us. I have a special guest with me today, the CEO of Times Television Network, MK Anand, uh, who is not just running a business, uh, uh, a television media business, but also recovering himself. MK, I got to know only today that uh, you, you tested co was positive for COVID. So wish you speedy recovery and thanks for joining us. I'm told MK is still in the hospital and thankfully he gets discharged tomorrow. But thanks for doing this for us. Yeah, thanks, uh, Naval, for having me over. And yeah, uh, COVID has been a good experience. <laughs> so as many of you know, MK does not need any introduction. Uh, MK uh, runs one of India's leading television networks, the Times uh, Television Networks uh, Network, which is, a, which is a combination of news and uh, entertainment uh, television channels. MK, as uh, some of you know, has almost three decades of experience in the media and entertainment uh, sector. He's a Times Group stalwart and his combined experience of working with the group spans over 24 years. So you can imagine, uh, you know, the kind of stints he's had in uh, uh, BCCL, starting from print, digital, broadcast. He's done it all. He's seen it all. Under his uh, leadership, Times Network has been steadily expanding its portfolio and business. On the print side, as some of you might know, Anand built the Times classified products in the 90s and later was instrumental in devising the maximizer, which became the centerpiece of Times Group's ad strategy in 2002 for over a decade. Uh, post that, he joined UTV Global Broadcasting as the CEO and turned around their TV business. Following the Disney TV buyout of UTV, he became the manager director of the merge entity and ran the company for a few years before Anand uh, took charge of uh, Times Network as MD and CEO in February of 2014. And since then, the network has seen spectacular, spectacular growth in all areas. Uh, the channels they run are Times Now, uh, which has been uh, a market leader for a, a good part of a decade. ET Now, Movies Now, Romedy Now have risen the charts. Welcome, MK. Good to have you on the show. Uh, how's the recovery going? Very good, very good, Naval. Thank you very much. It was a really long biodata reading. <laughs> Thanks for jogging my memory. It's been really long. Yeah, and I've put 25 years with the group. Uh, actually, more than 25. And uh, it's been great. Uh, corona, I've been in, in here in the hospital last for the last 10 days. And uh, the initial three, four days was, uh, you know, the average normal fever with a little uh, dry cough and, uh, you know, chills, a little bit of... Uh, and very, very characteristic uh, ache in the foot. So this is what I think it was. And fortunately for me, uh, after the first, uh, I mean, three or four days, those symptoms went off. Apparently, the symptoms completely go off in five days. It's a normal fever if you don't have other complications. In certain people, and it, it is not the virus, it is your body which uh, whose reaction to the virus is actually the differentiator. In certain people, apparently, it triggers something called the cytokine storm, right. which is a body autoimmune response, which uh, starts getting evident, apparently, and nowadays, because we've already put in six, eight months, hospitals are really, really well equipped. These guys here, Fortis Balloon is, I think, one of the best. So they started uh, checking uh, blood markers to see whether I will go into a cytokine storm. And the cytokine storm is uh, that day eight to day 12, when you apparently uh, you know, can have uh, some sort of... Uh, uh, you know, immune reaction which can hit your lung and heart or, 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 or you know, vital organs. In my case, fortunately, there were no markers showing that. If it did, then they apparently are able to right. manage that with, uh, with uh, steroids, etc. My wife is actually in the next room. She had a little bit of uh, up and down on the markers, so they immediately put her on that. So she's also out of danger. And uh, these 12 days is uh, 12 days, the critical day. After that, uh, I think they keep me, I think I'll be out tomorrow or day after. And after that, they have asked me to be at home for five days for uh, protective quarantine for others. And after that, I'm out. I'm as good as vaccinated now. That's glad to know. Glad to know you recovered well. Let me ask you about the other recovery. How is business recovering from Corona? Uh, business actually, uh, our business uh, has done quite well uh, compared to the uh, normal, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the numbers that I'm hearing about uh, various other companies. And I think uh, in the news business, uh, the other news channels, our, uh, my other NBA members, etc. I think even they, they've not been so badly off vis-a-vis -vis last year. So we have uh, fortunately been within a single digit variation vis-a-vis uh, -vis last year uh, in the first half. So we're going to be closing September now in the next uh, 15 days. 
and uh, we're looking like we'll be not more than eight to nine percent lower than last year. And this is, mind you, including uh, election revenues which we had last year. So if election revenues were not there, then probably we would have been equal to or minor more than last year. Uh, but right. that I think is not really um, uh, representative of the industry. From an industry point of view, uh, I think, uh, and that's we also had that very bad hit during April, May, and up to June. Uh, I think uh, when I'm speaking for the industry, television and advertising per se, I think uh, we can say that uh, September probably is the first month in which there is some signs of things being not as broken as they were even up to August. Uh, I wouldn't say that there is in a quarter two has been a recovery from an advertising or from a business point of view for the entire industry. Again, I'm keeping news out. Yes. We've had the benefit of news. Uh, so I think, uh, and I'm also talking from the group's point of view, as in uh, our radio business, our print business, our uh, our movie business, our digital business. Overall, I think September, uh, there is a recovery beginning, uh, which we can see. And uh, if uh, current uh, indications are, uh, you know, are going to hold, then I hope uh, quarter, f quarter three, uh, we might be, uh, you know, uh, getting to a place where we are not broken anymore. Uh, you know, from a very positive, optimistic point of view, we all started the year with, at least I started the year with, I want to be equal to last year in quarter four, That's right. which uh, some of us probably will be able to get to. Uh, but I think uh, full recovery of this business into a pre-COVID era, uh, in my opinion, will take uh, at least next year festival. But I think uh, it's a, a good message of hope that things are getting back on track. Eight to nine percent being 8-9% down from last year's number is not a bad achievement at all, given that, you know, if you compare like-to-like -like growth, then you're doing okay. If you take That's out the election true. But, part. Uh, but, uh, but uh, Naval, we are, uh, uh, we, are, we are a little, uh, as I said, we have been a little lucky. One is we have a large news portfolio in us. And uh, news has been quite active, not just from a viewership point of view, not just from a uh, drama point of view, but also from the point of view of uh, a lot of uh, banks, etc., uh, have been wanting to participate uh, in uh, yes. uh, branded content and uh, content integrated activities, uh, which we've been, uh, you know, um, pursuing a lot of initiatives. Uh, you might have also seen your, your so-called uh, web-based seminars and, and, and content uh, presentations have been, I think, uh, quite successful. And uh, so with us, because, I mean, after all, TV is another form of that. Right. Uh, besides that, uh, we've also pivoted uh, quite sharply and successfully in the last uh, three to four years uh, into subscription uh, and content as a direct revenue source than as a secondary revenue source through ad sales. And that's something that strategically we had uh, decided back in 2015-16 uh, when we, uh, you know, went on a very aggressive, uh, you know, uh, subs uh, development from a brand point of view. Uh, to build that as a case. And uh, for us, NTO was a good uh, watershed moment and uh, where uh, the consumer suddenly got, uh, you know, some kind of a power to decide what goes into the 250 or 300 rupees that he spends. And uh, we fortunately found ourselves, uh, you know, being picked up uh, quite, uh, you know, popularly, quite uh, frequently. And uh, we were able to, we've been able to build a decent, uh, you know, subscription business. And uh, we also would like to state here that uh, at least we believe and we think that is the feedback that we are getting from the intermediaries, which is the MSOs and the DTH operators, et cetera. We are seen as a must take option even by the intermediaries right. uh, to make the base bouquets uh, look attractive. Uh, Times networks, English uh, movie and English news channels are seen as a must take. So overall, all that put together, NTO, uh, post NTO, we have been, uh, you know, we've been able to further that part. So subscription is a important part of our revenue. It was already last year and this year uh, it has sort of uh, held us at a time when ad sales has been generally, you know, sort of collapsing like nine pins around us. Uh, this is uh, subscription has helped us. And of course, as I said, news has helped us. In our English entertainment and uh, Zoom businesses, of course, ad sales has been as bad as, uh, yeah. you know, it has been. I think we've been the worst hit category even compared to other categories. So that we are uh, nursing them back to... Uh, you know, uh, standing up uh, on their feet as of right now. And we are, we are still working on that. That's good to know. I think uh, the message I get is that uh, worse is behind us. And uh, depending upon how uh, various broadcast companies play their cards, we should be able to get back into the, you know, growth zone next year onwards. 
Uh, let me pick you up on one of the key things that has happened in the broadcast industry in the last few years, uh, MK. And I, I, I prefer not to go chronologically. Let me pick up on one important aspect that has changed the broadcast industry and also helped you in many ways, which is the implementation of NTO. Uh, when uh, you know the original NTO uh, paper came out four, five years back, uh, some broadcasters were against uh, NTO and uh, there were a lot of misgivings about that. Even last year when it was implemented, it was a you know six month, uh, very big mess for the industry. But eventually what we've seen happening is uh, a lot of broadcasters have seen subscription revenues go up, which is a good thing because eventually if you can go and, uh, get uh, consumers to pay for content. Your uh, dependence on advertising is lesser. Uh, content revenue is direct content revenue, as you called it, is more predictable. It does not change with the vagaries of economic growth necessarily all the time. So what is your take on NTO now with hindsight, with the benefit of hindsight, you know, one more than a year behind us, one and a half years. What is your take on NTO and what do you think of NTO too? Because the government, the, the regulator is also pushing for implementation of NTO too. I think, uh, you know, personally, uh, conceptually, philosophically, I'm against NTO or any such, uh, you know, tariff order. Uh, consumer and uh, business uh, have a commercial relationship, have a, uh, have a competitive commercial relationship with, I think, over 900 channels and so many players. There is enough competition for prices to be controlled by the market. And there, I don't think, is a requirement for any regulator to come with a tariff order. We are still talking about the tariff order in this business after 30 years of liberalization and successive waves of liberalization. Uh, unfortunately, this is an area which uh, is still, uh, and you know, I don't want to touch upon the other two controversial areas where uh, you know price is still controlled, which is drug and uh, drug as in medicines and uh, and and uh, fuel. But although fuel apparently is not, I mean, it is it is a uh, you know it's almost like uh, controlled, but it is not. Uh, I think uh, you know it, it's sad that after 30 years of liberalization, we still have some kind of a control or a tariff order for fixing prices of subscription. That is like uh, uh, saying that, you know, uh, you will start putting a price on Coca-Cola or start putting a price on soap or start putting a price on uh, any consumer product uh, that you start availing. I mean, there is no uh, uh, price control on, uh, on, uh, uh, on data, for instance. There is okay. no price control on, on mobile uh, phones. The same uh, regulator is in that space. Uh, I think price control should be left to the market. So therefore, fundamentally, conceptually, I'm talking about, uh, it is something that uh, eventually should be not there. Having said that, I think uh, the, the, the base thing that NTO, uh, the so-called NTO 1 uh, did uh, last year when it came was that it came and disturbed uh, a very, very long uh, inertia uh, system which was, you know, almost an unsaid norm of 250 rupees for television was there for the last 20 years. 20 years back, when you and I must have bought a shoe and what we buy the same shoe now, or a car, or some of them have gone down, some of them have gone up, computer, gold. But 250 rupees has been 250 rupees. Now, for better or worse, this change led to, for the first time, a break in that equilibrium and that break in the equilibrium uh, uh, you know yes of course for the benefit of the customer because the customer got the uh, you know got the power to decide what not to get and at least know what i am paying for and that is that way it is fantastic therefore nto is good uh, and that change led to uh, some of the and, and again I'm, I'm, i'll talk to you from uh, our point of view and not just our point of view, I would, even if I was to look at it as a student of the, of the, of the situation, I think uh, because there was a stable equilibrium and because there were major players who were anyway sort of having an ad led model and there was some kind of an old boys uh, club there wherein within that 250 rupees, somehow all the broadcasters, the big four or five broadcasters had put their, uh, you know, what they wanted to take out of fit and fixed it up. And there was only a little left there and that was left for to be distributed amongst the, you know, the other players who were not the so-called GC players who were the specialized broadcasters and who also get, took it upon themselves that no, we, there is no scope of getting any subscription. We will have to do advertising. I mean, even an HBO, for instance, or a Disney where I uh, was earlier, which is internationally, these are non-ad-led uh, uh, players. 
uh, they had to sort of do the ad model in india and sort of go with that that's right now the good thing is with npo whether it is turner or us or even and, and of course disney became stars so it's a different thing but even if disney was by itself i think disney would have made a a better impact on itself uh, npo would have would have would have been positive for it so from that point of view i think uh, people started getting paid for what they were worth which is good uh, and parity packages of these major four broadcasters which actually look very very similar from the gc's point of view uh, suddenly and that is something that i i calculated because i thought that you know if you are a a person who was a star home or a or a colors home or a sony home the likelihood of you not taking the other three or at least not taking at least two of the other other three is high because you don't have multiple time bands in the, you know or or ability to watch three ta- channels at the same time and therefore the 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 optimization i think that has happened is that people started dumping one or two of the four major which money has got distributed amongst a few of us which i think made it look a little more logical than it was having said that and having as i said yes we have we've had uh, you know and i wouldn't say that nto gave us any bonanza we've been working on uh, on on uh, the brand times now the brand movies now et now etc and times network i mean you remember we used to be called times television right. network we changed it we've sort of exactly. done a lot of brand work over the last four or five years so when we presented the man pack uh, last year saying that you know here is something that your the man of the house uh, cannot do with uh, i mean can cannot do without uh, that that made an impression and that you know 10 rupee pack that we put out there was value for money from the kind of channels that we were providing out there and i'm very very happy that we are one of the i think we are probably the highest paid news uh, bouquet and that is you know my real real sort of achievement in this uh, in this job here because i think uh, you know as long as news is going to be ad led uh you will have uh time spent dictate uh like it is dictating and uh, content has the potential to uh, go a certain direction uh which can be uh you know uh, overall in the long run uh anti society uh, or social uh appreciation of reality or 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 or, or things that are happening around and therefore i think uh, if for us it's a beginning and i'm very happy that uh, you know uh, at least in the hindi space while uh, we were discussing pre this you were saying that uh, most news is fta i want to correct you there i think uh, india today group is not fta i think uh, uh, ndtv is not fta uh, abp has recently sort of moved back to pay and uh, i think uh, the major broadcasters if they all understand this as a first step and then slowly start sort of you know charging a little bit for the news uh, right. channel that they are putting out there and and i'm 100% sure the news channels that we have i'm not just talking about mine i'm talking about the news channels that we have have millions of viewers millions of viewers and they are all very popular brands all the brands that i talked about and these popular brands i'm 100% sure consumer will pay uh, if they can pay for data if they can pay for you know and they can pay so much for their uh, for phone connection oh, and they are 100% yeah, yeah yeah and 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 that little money will grow into a something substantial and i want to be you know facing a day when we would be able to have a single a news channel which has no ads at least one channel amongst mine which we should be able to say that you know this channel is paid for by the viewers and the journalists who are getting paid for are only responsible to the viewer and not to uh, you know uh, not to sort of making the viewership number look big and because we are getting you know the hand that feeds is the advertiser with no disrespect meant to the advertiser advertisers have have finance have sponsored this industry for the last 100 plus years advertising is the reason that media has grown but at a certain level i think there is a need uh, for us as industry providers industry uh, uh, players uh, to understand subscription as a uh, viable mode i also think that uh, the regulator needs to step in here the government needs to step in the ministry needs to step in to understand the importance of news and how you know there is this talk now uh, about this this current uh, story which is you know really broken all all bounds and sort of run away the right. ssr uh, tragedy uh that that has sort of put in fact there have been some pils uh, the court has uh, heard it and there have been statements out there that you know news needs to be regulated etc i think uh, you know what needs to be done is that two things i think one is uh, you need to not regulate subscription you need to make it easier for subscription revenue to be uh, earned by uh, by news channels uh, at least at a regulation level you should make it uh, probably some kind of mandate needs to come that that the industry should support uh, the 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 the, the Uh, the distributor industry should support and the consumer should understand that they should pay something towards the news channels 
that is one and the second thing i think in the western markets if you see uh new channels are not measured by uh, by trps by tvts they are measured by reach time spent is not used in 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 uh, these markets and that uh, means that uh, you know once you distribute a channel and your reach becomes the the way uh, you know you are and of course brand scores etc or advertisers can have some other metric if you are able to rid time spent as a metric from news that also can lead to uh, improvement in that space so i think this reform is required uh, but the you know before we sort of has the world to change i think it will be a good idea for us to change we're trying to change and we're very happy that we are successful in in having a very solid subscription uh, revenue base for our news channels and i hope my 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 com- competitors and, and 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 other industry fellows also do that since you you touched upon a very valid topic as far as the content of news channels is concerned and as i was mentioning to you earlier news content is now a mainline topic it is a drawing room topic for consumers for audience to uh, sit down and discuss and we've seen over the last few i remember 15 20 years back you know ghost stories run on news channels and it, it used to be berated uh, no end after that news has come a long way we are doing serious content with gravitas but what has also happened alongside a uh, lot of news content is today being accused of kind of pushing the boundary too much in terms of what should be accept- acceptable to society what kind of agenda is being run you mentioned the ssr case we've seen all sorts of coverage happening pils being filed pils in fact are being regularly filed in court now on uh, around uh, news content what is your view on that what is the view for example nba also got together and created a self regulatory me- mechanism on uh, you know news content uh, the government has been working with the nba what is your view on news content does it require to be reined in no i don't think re- news content requires to be reined in at all i think uh, as i said uh, the revenue model is uh, is fitting you to be uh, you know uh, creating content that gives you higher time spent in that uh, as long as you are within the fact within the boundary of fact as long as you're not lying as long as you're not peddling fake as long as you're strictly within the fact limits the limit of truth your presentation style cannot be held against you if somebody is dramatic if somebody you know presents with a flourish somebody screams or shouts raves rants i don't think that can be held against that person him or her and i think uh, you know uh, anybody who is doing anything uh, in a in a in a free consumer uh, free capitalist consumer oriented uh, product market situation like news is is doing it because the consumer wants it it is easy for a few people to sit and say this is not what the consumer wants if that is not what the consumer wants then why is it that uh you know the Pretty rating agency okay. is able to get uh, is is able to put uh you know weekly numbers which really reflect the fact the fact is that it is appreciated but as i said again it has to be within the very hard boundary of fact it has to be within the very hard boundary of truth you cannot have lies fake or fiction be mixed into your truth to make it palatable to make it more presentable however how you say that what are you sort of you know uh, how how you are gesticulating how what is the tone of your voice that is entirely something that i think you should leave it to the consumer and the presenter and not be a judge of that at all let me uh, rewind a little uh, mk uh, as i mentioned at the start of the show you joined uh, you took over the times news network in 2014 and the last 6 7 years for the broadcast industry have been monumental in many ways i remember early part of the decade uh, the government uh, embarked on their agenda of digitizing di- digitizing the you know sort of distribution industry uh, we shifted from tam to bart sometime in 2015 16 and that's the time when you were really getting into your groove and bart tam to bart was a you know massive shift for the industry uh, in the sense uh, of uh, you know expanding the people meters uh, indianizing kind of more indian indianizing or bharatizing as you know we call it uh, content on tv and that really changed the way uh, television networks produced content and positioned content uh, one of the things that you know i asked you earlier also was that times network was very well placed to kind of take advantage of this expansion of people meters and go out why didn't you do a hindi television channel Uh, that's a natural expansion of my portfolio i would say business uh, 
priorities uh, have actually been uh, mainly dictating that. But uh, I can tell you that uh, the change from TAM to BARC, or uh, when I came in in 2014, we were just about getting ready. The industry was getting ready for that. Uh, we were, uh, I mean, BARC, uh, TAM was uh, representing or at least covering about 40% of India's geography and extrapolating it on the rest of India. I think they had uh, in the range of around 10,000 or 12,000 boxes. Uh, and uh, now we are operating with, I think, 40,000 plus boxes with BARC. Uh, the, the, uh, and TAM used to be sort of only in six states with 0.1 uh, to 1 lakh uh, and others were all 1 lakh plus towns. Whereas today you have bulk of the boxes are in rural and uh, which means that representation has gone so much more, which means that cable operators in all those zones uh, become, uh, you know, uh, important from a measurement, uh, uh, you know, uh, what is that called, a point of view, and therefore we need to be in those places, etc. We uh, adapted to it way back in 2014-15. We went from, I think, when I joined, it was we had 300 deals, uh, 300 deals out there with uh, uh, MSOs and cable operators. I mean, DTH operators. In one and a half years, we went to 3,000. So now it is in that range, three thousand, two and a half to three and a half thousand, uh, you know, uh, you know, distributor deals happen, and that therefore is an expansion of our network into uh, every little place that otherwise would not have been there. So from that point of view, I think uh, you know that the, the the expansion of Bark uh, led to the the increase of uh, of television. If you see two thousand fifteen to two thousand twenty. Uh, do you know that the viewership of television in the same period that uh, apparently 2015 is also the first OTT coming in, which is the topic of the of the discussion that we have. The first OTT comes in in 2015. Uh, between that time and now, television viewership has gone up by some 63%. The television reach has gone up by 23%. And time spent has gone up by 33%. From three hours something, it's gone up, gone up to four hours something. And uh, the reach has gone up fundamentally because a lot of players like us have continuously increased their uh, their their distribution mm -hmm. willfully to get uh, uh, to be seen where the new boxes are going and therefore i think it's been a fantastic move for everybody and that has also sort of paid for in uh, in advertising because there has been an almost 11 10 11 percent growth over the last five years cagr in television advertising revenue so i think it has been actually uh, good for the television industry that uh, bark came uh, with this mandate of going uh, you know, increasing the number of boxes. Although statistically, personally, if you ask me, I go by what my good friend L.V. Krishnan says. I mean, his best example is that you don't need to take the whole blood to check a human being's blood. You need to just take a drop. That's so right. from that point of view of the sample, I think uh, number of boxes is not so very important as long as the, 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 the way the sampling has been done. And therefore, of course, you know, 44,000 boxes definitely superior to 10,000 boxes. Uh, however, the, the, the sheer fact that it went rural uh, has been a huge shot in the arm uh, for, for television. But television, including us, we went rural at a time that uh, I think if this had not happened and times now had not gone or movies now had not gone to those places. Today, when digital came, we would have been, you know, they would have just leapfrogged on our head. People wouldn't even have known right. that times now or movies now existed in, say, some small market uh, in the outskirts of Udaipur, for instance. So I think... Bark coming uh, was very, very useful from that point of view. Indianization, Bharatization. Yes, I mean, does that do good for Indian languages? I think fantastic. I think not just Hindi. I think all Indian languages, the regional channels have sort of uh, grown by leaps and bounds in the last uh, uh, three, four years. Uh, I want to sort of launch uh, the, this one. But unfortunately, uh, you know, we have had our own share of, uh, you know, historic things to catch up. We wanted to sort of quickly get into the digital space. Then we have had our famous uh, uh, 2017, 16, 17, uh, which is, uh, you know, events beyond the black swan events that everybody else has, uh, you know, faced. And uh, I think uh, ASAP, and this year probably would have been the right year, but again, the, the biggest black swan came and sat on our necks, uh, you know, in February. So I think, uh, as uh, you know, sooner than later, we will be sort of on that, in that, in that space, yeah. Fantastic. That's good to hear. 
let me ask you i have two three questions from this so let me ask you the first one it's a very relevant thing you mentioned about you know how the transition from tam to bark happened and the expansion of people meters the boxes especially into areas which were not on the broadcasters radar earlier helped growth of television in the last 6 7 years what is the next big event or say if the tv industry were to similarly grow in the next 6 7 years what would be required does it require bark to now expand people meters from 44000 to a lakh which they plan to anyway what are the other events that can fuel the growth of the industry keeping in mind now ott is much stronger than it was digital is much stronger than it was in 2015 i think uh, the fundamental uh, drive is now going to come from the production technology changes from the process changes that has already happened really nearly without all of us realizing in the last 6 months uh, i don't think uh, going from 44000 uh, boxes to 1 lakh boxes is going to be of great significance because uh, that's only going to improve uh, the the calculations uh, and the 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 it will it will it will improve the you know the smallest uh, tg uh, measurement uh, but it won't sort of at a fundamental level improve television distribution because i think that is more or less already done uh, i think uh, you know with nto1 there was a 3% drop in uh, in reach uh, when the market adjusted but because of lockdown we have another 16% growth in overall viewership and therefore i think that is a peak in in my opinion i think next year we might see a little decline once the lockdown is not there people are going to be out etc so i don't think television viewership is going to continue to increase in the next 5 years as it has in the last 5 years yes it will increase at the natural pace of growth in number of households in the country because we are still a growing uh, population uh, other than that i don't think there is going to be growth coming from uh, any such uh, uh, measurement universe related thing i yeah. think the the big growth is going to come from uh certain certain uh paradigm shifts that have happened in production technology in uh, collaboration technology in working uh, processes in work processes which have happened during covid when pushed to the wall i think that is going to fundamentally improve the economics of this industry and the money that is going to get saved i think is going to get invested into better content more content more channels uh and i think it is also going to be timely that digital technology Uh, of distribution uh, is going to sort of also help uh, distributing uh, more number of channels uh, by all of us broadcasters and thereby increase improve uh, the variety of the of the portfolios that we are able to sort of put out there i think that is going to be uh, the first kicker that i am expecting in the next one and a half two years i uh, when you look at the data on india uh, and compare it to the globe i think we are about 4 or 5 years behind in terms of uh, the digital uh, digital uh, to television uh, you know uh, situation uh, with reference to uh, mainline media and, uh, and 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 so called new media i think in 2023 also uh, according to uh, the pwc report uh, we are not going to be where uh, where uh, your uh, uh, western market global markets have been in 2017 so we are we may be even 5 to 6 years behind them so i think i think television is continuing to be going to continue to be the trunk medium uh, uh, in the in the in the foreseeable future uh, i think uh, you know and therefore we need to look at it uh, more as a uh, you know able to pick up the benefits of digital and not really get scotched by digital over the next 3 years and therefore uh in my opinion the the margin that we are now able to free out because of this improvement in our processes i think is going to become a very solid uh you know it, kitty it in the next to, two years uh, is it going to put significant money on the table i think so i think so so give us an I example so. what kind of uh, you know work process improvement are you talking about and what kind of saving does it bring uh i think first and foremost uh, technology adoption a uh, technology already existed i don't think uh, any new technology has suddenly happened overnight i mean that's not happened i think uh, everything like for instance you and i are currently sitting and talking on a on a software that we were not uh, you know fully conversant uh, you know even 6 months back uh, some of us may have used it but all of us were not using it i mean today uh, your you know the average uh, the lowest common denominator in office uh, is able to sort of i mean i think i think collaboration technologies like microsoft teams or zoom are now becoming as uh, easy to handle and ubiquitous as the email or whatsapp that is a fundamental change that is a fundamental change second is uh, this whole uh, you know freeing people people from traveling and working from home i think that's a cultural change 
i think a lot of us were held back not because this was not possible because but because of the inertia of managers carrying uh you know i wanted to do this two years back one and a half years back in fact my idea was to by 2021 to have 30% of my workforce working from home this is back two years one and a half years back in fact i started it in delhi with my digital team 45 people were sent home and they started working from there and their productivity in fact went up but uh, you know when we actually went into uh, this uh, you know this uh, work from home in march when i actually checked with the hr team and i said that digital in delhi must have fully adopted he said no sir after that experiment we had uh, called them back because we didn't know that it was supposed to be permanent so that is the mind state of people so i think i think that mind state change is what is putting serious amount of uh, efficiency and i can only tell you this much that i'm seeing the last 6 months the pnl has been able to uh, you know uh, let go of the clutches of around 8 to 10% of last year's base cost without compromising on quality of output i can't say for others but i can tell you my best example is et now uh, which is a uh, which is a very busy channel which is a channel which is continuously watched which actually cannot go uh, wrong it cannot sort of go down uh, because you know there are people who sort of put money on 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 yes. what we are saying uh, you will not believe that uh, when i tell you this that we operate with about 5 to 6 people in office now and the entire team is at home everybody including the anchors the entire production other than those five people who are in office looking at the basic you know master control everybody else is in office as at home and uh, uh, slowly but steadily like for instance yesterday day before yesterday i saw an interesting statistic uh, shaunil sent me uh, said that you know uh, six months back we were operating out of two centers today we are operating out of 37 centers across the country people across the country 37 centers across the country we've already started hr has already started now recruiting people in markets in places like uh, you know patiala and, uh, and 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 guwahati and uh, sholapur with a view to having people working out of there not having to come here so that is the uh, change that is happening and that cost itself i think is significant uh, i mean obviously in the first year or even the next year because you know i don't think the worst is what what we have seen is the worst yet i think the worst is going to be when this whole thing is over and then people take stock and a lot of business i think will close down will you know there was going to be you know banks coming to terms with uh, bad loans etc i think next year therefore is going to be as bad so probably the year this year and next year these savings will probably contribute to the pnl but going forward i think that free 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 resources is going to be a significant input on content development at a time that the digital uh you know appetite uh, the ott appetite is really opening up because people are also having a lot of time and the kind of content that i'm seeing now is definitely more than and, and more varied than what i was seeing 6 months back or a year back or or 2 years back i think there is and the, that's the other thing that technology adoption also leads to technology adoption in terms of camera types lighting types editing software presentation software etc that is also improving substantially and all that is going to uh, actually probably give uh, i have a very simple belief and i i have been successful till now i have since since 1990 since 95 uh, 97 actually i am dabbling with digital because i handle classifieds and classifieds was the first uh, uh, product product which was hit by digital so 97 onwards i am handling handling digital that is the reason on my resume i say i have been handling digital also because the first time classifieds.com was designed by me i, I handled it trend 2000 1990 uh, 2000 i think 2001 i have always seen that digital has only given equal to or more than what it takes away to the main line business That's i think uh, yeah i think digital yes it takes away it takes away consumers it takes away advertisers it takes away xyz but you know if you only look at that and it's like looking at the glass half full you should look at what digital gives you digital is improving your productivity your creativity your presentation your cost your distribution your marketing ability so substantially that if you were to not focus on that and only focus on what digital is taking away then you're going to be a loser so i think the least that you can have is a zero sum game and if you're smart you can have a positive game purely by surfing on digital even But when you're it, sitting in an old media brand let me ask you is it a zero sum game for uh, legacy media brands because what has happened in the last 5 uh, years Uh, you have two parts to your business: the entertainment channels and the news channels. Entertainment channels, especially the English one, a lot of audience has shifted to you know watching uh, content on OTTs, digital content, and you know the global OTT, OTTs and Indian OTTs and so on and so forth because of 
the television channels have had it not easy so to say viewership has kind of stagnated in many cases fallen ntu kind of gave it another push downwards right the other part is that when it comes to news uh, the sources of news have really proliferated and fragmented right it is it is just humongous the number of sources from which one is getting news accepted that in india the time spent on tv is still lesser when you compare it with some of the western more evolved markets hence there is headroom for growth but the fact remains that uh, digital is taking the consumers attention and time away which is uh, eventually going to uh, benefit you know the big guys the googles and facebooks of the world who are able to consolidate and bring on table you know millions of audience whereas you know smaller plays kind of you know uh, get left behind so is it a zero sum game how how do you benefit you know on the balance from digital because you know uh, as we've seen in print the media industry is swimming against the tide when it comes to digital so i think i think uh, you know when i mean a digital when i mean digital i mean the entire thing digital includes email to me digital includes this phone to me digital, digital includes computer it. digital yes. for me is computer it is technological technology aided digital transformation that is point number 1 so i think uh, i am not talking about the there are no two there are no big players there are only two players so i'm not talking about this duopoly that we are talking about i'm talking about overall and i genuinely have seen that it has not been a zero sum game it has been a positive game for me right from the beginning because i think digital allows higher distribution more distribution cheaper distribution yes digital uh, distribution is unprotected distribution to the extent that while you know uh, we would like to be within walled garden so that we can always have a ticket to it uh, uh, digital distribution uh you know makes your content uh, you know go beyond that wall and then sort of spread all over the place and uh, therefore get picked up by anybody and everybody you know that's up to you how how you're going to be sort of monetizing that or uh, you know converting that to value whether it is by brand like for instance we have an 8 and a half million uh, twitter base on on times now now is that good or bad i mean content which is going on to those 8 and a half million handles out there people who are mm-hmm. sort of uh, looking at times now from there is not uh, giving me any money but is that improving uh, something for me yes now how do i do it that is where i need to bring in intelligence that how do i marry that uh, you know medium and convert that into becoming a feedback mechanism for me from a brand point of view into creating uh, more stickiness on my content and make the content more conversational and more spoken about i mean if if news or topic gets discussed on water coolers and in the parliament house it is also not just because of the news are at 9 o'clock it is also because it is getting amplified across social media across so many places so we need to be able to sort of cut those right channels so we need to be able to have the right kind of creative jockeying uh, of 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 marketing plus plus distribution plus content uh, to use these uh, uh, these these new mechanisms as as they as they happen fair enough let me come back to uh, another issue you mentioned when we spoke about the transition from tam to bark and you know bark's expansion of Uh, boxes people meters really given a very big fillip to the broadcast industry uh, there was a re- recent uh, diktat from bark about the landing pages issue and that's again been a you know kind of a simmering thing for the last few years news as you know other uh, domains in television is a very competitive uh, you know vertical and there are players who have invested significantly in landing pages what is your view on the topic uh business cycles right. so i think uh, landing pages uh, and the current uh, order or current step by bark uh, two weeks back is uh, uh, you know hostile i would say uh, you know with all due respect uh, you know we we are one of the founders uh, uh, founding supporters of bark when 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 we moved from tam to bark and and we continue to sort of uh, support bark uh, bark is headed by an ex times network uh, ceo and uh, we respect bark's uh, processes and 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 i have sort of in private and public always sort of uh, been a very staunch uh, supporter of uh, the statistical veracity and and solidness of the processes of bark and uh, therefore uh, i was a little surprised when uh, unilaterally they have moved uh, to sort of come up with this uh, you know uh, one 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 dictate that uh, we will remove uh, landing page uh, influence now let me sort of uh, jog memory of everybody on this uh, pa- 
this group here and you, uh, you know, to a few uh, years back. Under severe competition in 2016 17, uh, you know, there was a lot of uh, distribution level ground, uh, you know, uh, moves uh, which were uh, undertaken by the competition. And uh, we, of course, being a group uh, which is, uh, you know, a very, very uh, long legacy and brand, and also a legacy of never playing uh, below the table or under the uh, belt uh, practices. Uh, you know, have been at the forefront of, you know, being absolutely following kosher uh, distribution practices. Now, in that situation, uh, we saw that one of the competitors had time and again uh, resorted to uh, underhand tactics, uh, which were, uh, you know, actually coloring the data at that time. And uh, you're aware of it. Uh, this is May 17 onwards. And uh, as a, uh, and that was obviously... Uh, tactics that we could not uh, symmetrically uh, replicate because that involved uh, doing things that we would not do. Uh, at that time, uh, we came up with this uh, perfectly legal and uh, kosher above the table uh, practice of uh, you know using landing pages as a mechanism to promote our channels. Now, a landing page is like the front page of a newspaper. Of course, the front page of a newspaper is very expensive, but it cannot be said that, oh, you have all the money, so you're putting your full page, front page ad, nobody else's ads get seen. So yeah. it is against competition. Now, that kind of a, uh, argument was uh, has been uh, put forth by some players uh, who obviously do not want to spend the kind of money that they want to. We are very clear, whether it is content or marketing or distribution, we believe that the, you know, the proverbial kheer will be only as sweet as the kind of things that you put into the kheer. So we did not want to sort of come short on that. And we are also confident that whatever we put into it, if we are able to come up with the right audience, we will be able to sort of get that and make a margin on that. And okay. therefore, we don't see any reason why a perfectly commercial business practice of improving your offtake, like you have a supermarket shelf, you have Colgate versus uh, Pepsodent, and Colgate pays for the front shelf to put something. Pepsodent cannot come and say that, okay, you're paying too much and I, my, my thing is not getting sold. He has to bid against it and... and, 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 and Displace them. So this was done by us, and uh, uh, we have, uh, you know, had, uh, you know, this going on for uh, the longest period now for the last three years. Uh, and my my fundamental argument to that is the reach that is coming out of landing pages is not spurious reach, unlike right. the reach that comes out of panel tampering, because a panel tampering leads to reach, which is not real reach. It is only tampering that particular box that is getting measured. And therefore, it is to the advertiser of fraud because the advertiser thinks he's getting, say, 2,000 or 4,000 TVTs and the actual number would have been 1,500. Whereas in landing pages, if you're showing 4,000 TVTs, it is 4,000 TVTs. Now, as far as the advertiser is concerned, now you're Hindustan Lever, you're putting an ad and the ad is appearing on a channel which is on a landing page. You are getting that reach. How does it matter? Now, if Bark is measuring what India watches for the sake of creating a metric for the Indian advertiser to buy, then Bark has no business to come in and say anything about the landing pages. That is point number one. Point number two, like I said, there have been certain philosophical, conceptual, leftist arguments that, oh, businesses that cannot afford, cannot sort of this one. And therefore, there have been some kind of, uh, you know, uh, moves in the MIB and in uh, TRAI, etc., to sort of talk about this landing page. This was challenged and we actually had a case between us and TRAI and TDSAT ruled in, the, in favor yeah. of that. And TRAI has now challenged us in Supreme Court. And as we speak, this matter is sub in Supreme Court. In the meanwhile, there is no business that these guys have here to suddenly sit and say that we have created this grand algorithm by which we are going to sort of take out, uh, take out the influence of spurious landing page influence. I want to know how it is spurious. And I want to know how is it that the advertiser who's getting a correct bona fide number of how much reach his channel is going to, is going to get affected. In a time where news is getting, news itself is becoming entertainment and it's getting gobbled up by, uh, by, by, by entertainment, this kind of mechanisms and this kind of motivated players like us are actually putting more money on the table to market news and make news bigger. Instead of you know, lauding that, here is a player, here is a, here is a sort of central body and I don't know who there, uh, comes up with this sudden uh, grand, grand scheme. So we are going to challenge that. We don't believe that is right. So we are, we are sort of exploring our legal options in that. 
So you are planning a legal uh, uh, recourse to uh, this order? Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you for bringing it up. I completely had forgotten about it. It's a, it's a recent development, and it, I know that you know it does uh, no, no. Uh, impact the news television business significantly. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, because COVID uh, had actually sort of blunted me a little bit because in the initial one week I was a little you know working too much, and then the doctors told me sort of not to be on uh, calls. So last one week, in fact, this is the first call after a long time that I'm putting on uh, work. Exactly. So I totally uh, slipped my mind. We are happy you're back, uh, fully in action. So let me also ask you a related question to this, MK. Uh, carriage speed has been a you know big bane for the industry. How do these developments impact carriage speed? The landing page order. NTO is trying to push NTO two, where they've also put some, you know, a base channels in a bouquet where, you know, uh, so the cable operator earns from both sides. There is 165 rupees to be earned uh, directly from free to air channels and plus also take carriage fee from, you know, paid channels. How does it impact the carriage fee ecosystem? But because that really impacts the uh, profitability and business viability of channels. I think uh, carriage fee, in fact, has been regularized. It has been uh, properly officialized by the NTO because carriage fee is bona fide charged by uh, operators now. And to that extent, carriage fee being uh, being being regulated there, uh, you know, just makes it uh, uh, clean and clear out there. Uh, personally, again, if you ask me, in the same vein as my original conceptual thought about the market being the right uh, arbitrator. Uh, I think uh, there is nothing wrong in uh, carriage fee. Uh, if uh, it is bad business sense, then people shouldn't do it. If it is happening, I don't think you should blame the operator. It's a very fashionable thing. I've seen in every uh, you know broadcaster grouping, everybody sits and uh, you know uh, you know says people all sort of uh, talk about carriage fee as some external monster created by a third party bunch of enemies. No. Nobody would charge carriage fee unless these five people sitting in this room were willing to pay. don't stop fighting to each other. So if they all decide that we don't want to fight with each other, you don't need to pay carriage fee, right? Like the best example is uh, this DD dish. DD dish is a classic case right now. I mean, they charge a certain amount, and I think they are right in charging that amount. They probably should charge more for that. That amount uh, is a new spending that all these people have got together and started paying, right? Now, if if all the operators got together and said, we don't want to do it, and everybody stopped doing it, carriage, uh, that much carriage fee could have been saved. It is carriage fee after all. Why yeah. don't they do it? So I think it is a carriage fee is a healthy uh, signal that the market is live and kicking. And the amount of carriage fee that is getting paid by broadcasters is a direct indicator of the money that they might be making by advertising. So I don't think there is anything wrong with carriage fee. And I think uh, the market is today uh, at a new, uh, new equilibrium post NTO. Uh, I don't think you know suddenly the the carriage fee uh, stream has dried up because if I was a DTH operator or a not a DTH operator a cable operator, if suddenly one large stream dries up, I will have to sack people or sort of uh, you know cut down some costs. And uh, none of them, the most of them are listed. None of them are like making hand over fist uh, money to that kind of an extent that you know. Uh, carriage fee is serious. I think I think the market has found a new equilibrium. Let me now, uh, uh, you know, look at uh, the future a little bit. You've uh, uh, you've kind of uh, invested a lot in uh, both digital transformation of your business and also make your company ready for digital advertising, putting content on you know digital platforms. Uh, a lot of media companies in India have put money on the table, but have not really returns seen returns coming from digital advertising. Digital transformation, as you explained, is one part of the business which all media companies have done. But digital advertising has not really, you know, uh, paid back uh, in the sense of uh, how much money has been invested. What's your outlook on that? Because as we have seen, the digital advertising pie is growing very fast, but the share of that money is largely going into the two global players, and it continues to grow for them. Whereas the other players have seen, you know, very minimal marginal growth. A lot of companies have scaled back plans for digital investments. So, what is your view? Where, where is the future headed? Because eventually, the fact remains that more and more consumers will continue to also adopt to digital, while they continue to watch TV. So, I think, I think, uh, you know, this is a this is a global problem. This is not a this is not an India specific problem. These two players, Google and Facebook, are a been for advertising models across the world uh, and uh, it's only going to get uh, increase because uh, I think uh, globally 
uh, I think they are currently, I mean, both of them put together is about 20 to 25%. Let me see how much is it. Approximately, uh, I think, uh, 22% by 20, uh, 26% in 2020 and going to 30% of the world uh, advertising and just these two players. Uh, okay. In India, yes. they are currently 14% going to 18%. Uh, it is shocking when I saw uh, the kind of uh, money that is getting spent by Group M uh, in, uh, into, into these two uh, players. And it is shocking to see the kind of money that the same Group M spends or, or, or uh, Group M spends come to the non-Google, non-Facebook uh, brands of uh, whether it is news or entertainment, etc. It's shocking. Uh, and, and that Why I don't it think is... It is shocking as in it is like, uh, you know, 50 crore, 100 crore and 2,000 crore, 3,000 crore. No, you know, it's not, it's not even 1,000 crore, 3,000 crore yeah. or 500 crore, 3,000 crores I'm talking about. So I think, I think uh, advertising beyond Google and Facebook, I can very safely say, does not exist at a scale that can support corporate, professional media the way it currently is uh, is, is, is structure. And I'm making a very, very strong statement here. The kind of money that is going into advertising in digital to outside Facebook and Google cannot support corporate professional media, whether it is news or entertainment. So it is in news and entertainment and media businesses interest to pivot out of ad model one, which means go into subscription model and pivot out of in some manner, this stranglehold duopoly in terms of the distribution mechanism. So whether it is uh, Disney trying to do Disney Plus, uh, or 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 you know any any of these these players emerging. Well, I think uh, globally emerging. some news companies have done it. You've seen what New York Times has done, and you know India is perhaps not uh, you know an equivalent example because you know the consumer here is not used to paying for news content as much. You know, entertainment content, a lot of companies have made a push. Consumers have a little bit started paying. News, I think, has been very undervalued and possibly, dare I say, by news players themselves who have not really yeah. gone out and you know, extracted money. Uh, that's the only way, I mean, like we discussed earlier. I mean, Yeah, no that is true. But, but, uh, but you have to look at the New York Times uh, uh, transformation model. New York Times has 1,700 journalists. It has more journalists than it ever had in its entire history. And uh, we don't, we don't, we don't, uh, you know, we don't plan our products, at, at least not right now. Uh, our products, whether it is uh, consumer products like newspapers or uh, television channels are optimized right now for viewership or readership, which is an ad, ad as currency. So I think, I think uh, we have three, four years more, which uh, is a luxury compared to the global market. Uh, we have three, four more years to go before uh, you know, we start getting, staring into a steeper precipice. Uh, I think we, in that meanwhile, uh, I would, uh, you know, sort of urge my, my, my industry colleagues and my own colleagues. And what we are doing is to try and, uh, you know, very quickly try to increase the depth of uh, the content uh, ability. Uh, you know, but the, the problem is also, however, that each brand is known for a certain, uh, certain uh, nuance or a certain type of content. Now, it needs to be seen how, for instance, a Times Now or a Mirror Now or an ET Now can be explored into uh, the variety that, for instance, if you were a Times of India or a New York Times are able to sort of command. Now, yes. New York Times has the advantage of the word Times and the word New York, and both are global. And uh, New York Times sitting there uh, looks at the globe as its market and not New York City or even the US as its market. Now, I think that's what we need to do. Uh, we need to be able to sort of, you know, deliver global products for a global audience and not, you know, just sort of look at it and say that, you know, I will provide you SSR content or I will provide you India local content just because I am Times now. Now, obviously that requires your uh, content process backend uh, to be, uh, you know, uh, completely different from what it is right now, completely different from what it is right now. And that is where I think, uh, to me, the greatest, uh, greatest uh, opportunity that I'm seeing is this new work style that has happened. Uh, I, we have suddenly sort of, uh, you know, getting used to uh, absolutely working without meeting the person for the next last six months, one year, two years, as we go forward. And therefore, I don't see any reason why I cannot have contributors sitting in Lebanon 
or contributors sitting in uh, you know in in Rio de Janeiro or in or in or in uh, in the US or in uh, you know Osaka and that is the opportunity and that i think is what uh, we need to sort of because ultimately we need to be able to a brand uh, brand becomes uh, the 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 thread around which uh, you know you're able to uh, you know arrange your uh, the pearls and the pearls you need to now collect from across the globe right. who are your content providers and your uh, content panels and i think i think journalism at the, not journalism uh, i think uh, content management at the central level brand level uh, will move i think to coordinating guest coordinating contributor coordinating uh, mechanisms enabled by technology uh, assisted by ai journalism uh, so that uh, you know new and varied uh, experts start contributing and you start speaking about varied stuff and genuine uh you know genuinely differentiated content i think new york times is very easy to say new york times is like you know everybody wants to become new york times you have to see the new york times approach paper that that paper itself is some 550 pages if you want i'll send it to you i have tried to read even the executive summary some 46 pages you understand so that is the that is there are, there are two 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 uh, papers that they have done one in 2016 17 and one recent to even get into the executive summary is a you know and it's they have they have and that is after actually doing so much it is not you know you start today and become tomorrow they have done it over 6 to 7 to 8 years now and i think in the process i think news brands if you want to monetize money on digital you have to invest now and be ready in the next 3 4 years otherwise as you said the the opportunity will be lost and you yeah, know yeah uh, yeah it's going to be very yeah. difficult like it's happening across many other sectors of media unless you get consumer to value your content and get them to pay money you will always be beholden to other interests you will not be able to do the best quality of job that you want to do and it it is unsustainable for business eventually over dependence on advertising well, thank yeah. you mk and there is a, there is a good move now one more point in australia which we are looking at quite keenly uh that they have been sort of there is legislation right. probably coming up where they are they're trying to sort of get the yeah. social media platforms to share That's cash right. with revenue. news providers right. we hope that kind of thing happens but yeah i mean we need to pivot on i think first you need to change then only you can expect the world to change is there any way planning the, to lobby the government on that to get the government to bring in a law uh i don't think this uh you know it's 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 a uh yeah maybe i i don't think we are yet there i don't think we are yet there uh let us see what happens in australia and as i said it is not yet a mature market it's i think we are at least 5 to 6 years behind and even at the pace of technological catch up that 5 to 6 years might translate to 3 years so in the next 3 years we we should be able to you know if we don't sort of intelligent people like us are not able to sort of come up with a solution to this then we don't deserve to be and i am i'm pretty sure at least i can talk for times now as a brand is 15 years old i guarantee you it will be live alive and kicking and as as vibrant in 15 years definitely and i hope i will be able to say the same thing about my sister brand which is 180 years old 182 and i'm sure they will also have plans to be there for the next 182 years i think years. one thing has become clear during covid people are gravitating more towards credible brands because you know there was so much misinformation being spread through whatsapp and other social media channels that the only news or content piece of content you would trust or believe in was that came from a credible credible brand yes. and i think that's opened a vista of opportunity yes. for yes. established brands to kind of take advantage i of. think as i said in the beginning you be within fact within truth and and you know rest will take care of itself we therefore in fact during covid we started this whole thing called fighting fear with facts i mean our lead campaign during this period is fighting fear with fact and i hope we'll sort of continue that as a position for the network as a whole so fact and credibility is what is going to be uh, you know our our only parachute as we are violently going to be thrown out of this you know flying plane now and uh, i think it will it will hold us in good stead i mean all that we need to do is to sort of learn how to maneuver in this and we probably will land up in an even better place than we were earlier that's what i think fantastic before i pick up audience questions we are already over time let me ask you one last question you spent as i said at the beginning 24 years in the industry i'm not going to ask you what happens right. next 30 years, years and 25 years in times yes 30 oh, years yes, in 25 industry. years yeah 30 years in total 25 in times i'm not going to ask you next 30 year or outlook because technology is changing too fast but let's look at the next 10 years for the broadcast industry we are sitting in 2020 2030 what do you think will be the shape of broadcast industry 
I think broadcast industry would have uh, melded and and fused with the with the uh, you know digital OTT because I think uh, you know digital. I mean, uh, television is already digital because the content was already digital. It is an you, know, you, right. you shoot it and you store it and uh, it plays out. The only difference between television as we know it right now and new will be the fact that right now it is linear, uh, one way unilateral. in the future it's going to be non linear uh, two way communication so the moment two way communication starts happening with better bandwidth and that will happen it's a matter of next three years this way or that way we will go 5g uh, once 5g happens i think uh, you will have to two way talking television and uh, tv will meld and fuse with uh, with uh, ott i think uh, you know when i look at uh, times now for instance uh, of the future i think i will have uh the option of five or six different breaking news at any point of time yeah and uh i will have also different states uh news uh, playing out and on the same topic if i want the connected news and then when you look at the page it actually is what is netflix right now so i think i think all channels each single channel each single major mega brand will become an ott with its own repository with its own linear and non linear and i think that's the product uh, mechanism i think it's going to become a much larger uh, industry a much 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 larger industry uh, than it is right now because i mean that's the way media has been globally and i think india is very small uh, you know in terms of both subscription and advertising even that correction to get to even a china level in terms of the per capita uh, you know you will look at this industry going up by 10 to 15 times right. I, think i think in there's, the next, there's a lot of headroom 10 years yeah huge headroom humongous headroom humongous headroom and growth will but come. but uh, yeah but There's i think uh, pessimism people... right now in the industry in the economy general society overall but i think it's a matter the worst is behind us next two, two quarters growth will come back jobs will come back employment will start picking up again i think so i think so i think so i think so it's like saying that if will you buy stocks in 2020 and what do you expect for those stocks to be in 2030 it is a blind man's guess unless the economy folds up and and sort of india becomes uh, you know uh, the indian ocean uh, <laughs> Uh, indian whatever stock that you pick in india in 2020 will be at least 3 to 4 times in 2030 whatever i guarantee you that similarly media i think will do even better at an overall level at a stock level media i cannot say that fantastic that's a very optimistic note to uh, end your remarks mk before we go i'd like to pick up a couple of audience questions we don't have much time but i'll pick sure. up two of them there is a question which uh, uh, which says you spoke about distribution and going to rural areas how does this impact carriage fee you partly answered this but uh, does going to larger areas also significantly yes. increase carriage fee yes 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 in, uh, the the first impact in 2015 when we decided to go uh, you know distributing to markets that we were not distributing was to spend more simple the the company was not spending earlier because it was conserving the funds the moment we realized that we have no choice we started spending but what i am trying to say is that spending however was not a waste it increased the brand it increased the you know the 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 footprint and eventually we were able to monetize higher yes it it starts with increasing uh, carriage spend distribution is spending whether it is carriage or you want to make toothpaste and sell tomorrow you will have to put a van out there right it is spending you will have to spend okay next question uh, this is about content cost on english entertainment channels since uh, nto has impacted the english entertainment space significantly as content cost especially movie cost started coming down uh there have been some uh, instances in fact uh, movies have been the biggest impacted category in the nto 1 uh, uh, unfortunately uh, other than us and uh, probably hbo uh, both of us had uh, small sized packs i mean turner pack was 10 rupees and times pack was also 13 rupees and the smaller pack was 10 rupees and these two packs were sold uh, right in the first week first month etc however in the case of star sony and z which were the other three players who had english movies their priority was to sell their base pack which was to sell the 49 rupee pack first and then sell the 79 rupee pack and the english movies were in the second tier because of which in the initial phase there was a significant drop in uh, reach of the uh, overall genre so while times uh, channels and hbo did not lose reach more than 25 to 30 to maybe 35% uh, the the star sony and z channels lost reach by almost 70 to 80% in the initial phase that led to almost a sort of a, a, a kind of a, a you know some kind of a drug shock to those people so for about 6 months i think uh, there was no uh, i think the, the the whole whole category lost steam in terms of advertising right. which led to uh, some of these players uh, probably stopping to renew 
and maybe the conversations back to the vendors were quite pessimistic till now. Uh, I think things would have improved by now had it not been for COVID because COVID led to another bunch of uh, problems in the first quarter. So the, uh, I mean, if I was a vendor, bad time for me. As a buyer, uh, you know, it has given us much needed relief because I think all of us had uh, outbid each other and taken the price up by two and a half times, I think, compared to what I uh, found it when I joined here. Uh, you know, the price, the, the, the total spend had almost gone up three to four times uh, during that phase. And I think uh, it's come down by about uh, at least 30%, uh, which is welcome. And I think it's more feasible, probably some more correction required, but uh, hopefully the business is looking better now uh, or will look better. As of right now, to be honest with you, my current business, everything else is done well, including Zoom, uh, but uh, our English entertainment channels are still sort of uh, yes, uh, not category, finding favor. That category yeah. is going through tough times. Yeah. Last question. How are you leveraging synergies between digital and TV with more people working from home? Uh, were there any challenges that you faced? Absolutely none. I have, uh, I'm proud to say that we are 1,250 people. I don't think more than 15 people, including me here, have uh, basically got affected by this because we have been the first in this country. We, we went in I think around March 10th or 13th. Uh, fortunately, because I was traveling in the last week of February to Africa and back. And when I crossed Aditya Baba Airport, I saw the, the, the stringent uh, you know, measures in that airport compared to uh, the Bombay airport at that time. In, I'm talking of end February. And apparently, uh, uh, Aditya Baba is, uh, is, is uh, China's gateway. Uh, I mean, Africa's yes. gateway for China. Mainly, a lot of Chinese come to Africa via there. And uh, that's, uh, that actually led me to thinking that maybe in a month or so we will have this problem. But, you know, it, it happened a lot before that. In fact, yeah, actually it happened in a month. But I came in and I told my team to go in for a, a sort of, a, you know, you do those, um, uh, those, those, those uh, uh, drills, you know, you do those drill, fire, fire drill uh, kind of a thing. So we started with the drill. We did not actually go into a lockdown, the lockdown. We actually said we'll do a one week drill and work from home so that we'll know how our systems uh, are able to cope up, uh, all the networks, etc. That's how we started in the second week after Holi immediately we started. And, uh, you know, fortunately, unfortunately, we continued. And we've also, in fact, already told our team that uh, I have already announced to them December 31st. And right now on this call, I can announce to them that definitely till March 31st, I do not want anybody to come back. And uh, right now we operate with about 200 people out there about 50 on the field and 150 in office and that too, two shifts. So 75 people at any point of time at home and 75 people uh, in office. So in reality, 75 plus 50, about 125 people out of uh, 1,250 people are only working from office. Rest of 90% of people are at home and we are beautifully managing. There was no technology glitch. Uh, in initial, that 10 days that we were doing the drill, we were able to uh, do a lot of, uh, you know, corrections, whatever required and we were able to sort of uh, move forward better. Fantastic. On that note, thank you, MK, uh, for joining us, especially in the current state. I, I wish you are back at home tomorrow and your family also recovers very soon. Look forward to seeing you in person. And, uh, you know, your recovery is very important for your company as well as the overall industry. I'm uh, thankful that so many people joined us and watched you live. Uh, with that, uh, thank you for joining us and have a good evening. I hope to see you for the next webinar. And uh, before I go, let me remind you, there's a series of webinars coming up on Exchange for Media. Tomorrow, we have a webinar on search advertising uh, with our partner Inmobi from 4 to 5 p.m. So whoever is interested or wants to know more about search advertising, please join in. Till then, stay, stay safe and MK, recover soon. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Naval. Thank you, everybody, for spending your time thank with you. me. Thank you very much. Take care.